Jewish holidays, also known as Jewish festivals or Yamim Tovim, Imam Tovim good days, or singular Yom Tub Yom Tov, in transliterated Hebrew English, are holidays observed in Judaism and by Jews throughout the Hebrew calendar. They include religious, cultural and national elements, derived from three sources, biblical mitzvah, commandments, rabbinic mandates, Jewish history and the history of the State of Israel. Jewish holidays occur on the same dates every year in the Hebrew calendar, but the dates vary in the Gregorian. This is because the Hebrew calendar is a lunisolar calendar i.e., based on the cycles of both the sun and moon, whereas the Gregorian is a solar calendar. Topic. General concepts Topic. Topic. Groupings. Topic. Certain terms are used very commonly for groups of holidays. The Hebrew language term Yom Tov, Yom Tub sometimes referred to as festival day, usually refers to the six biblically mandated festival dates on which all activities prohibited on Shabbat are prohibited, except for some related to food preparation. These include the first and seventh days of Passover, first day of Shavuot, both days of Rosh Hashanah, first day of Sukkot, and first day of Shemini Atzeret. By extension, outside the land of Israel, the second day holidays known under the rubric Yom Tov Sheni Shel Galiot literally, second Yom Tov of the diaspora, are also included in this grouping. Colloquially, Yom Kippur, a biblically mandated date on which even food preparation is prohibited, is often included in this grouping. The English language term High Holy Days or High Holidays refers to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur collectively. Its Hebrew analog, Yamim Noram, Imam Nuram Days of Awe, is more flexible, it can refer just to those holidays, or to the ten days of repentance, or to the entire penitential period, starting as early as the beginning of Elul, and more rarely ending as late as Shemini Atzeret. The term Three Pilgrimage Festivals, Slows or Glim Shalish Regalim refers to Passover, Shavuot and Sukkot. Within this grouping Sukkot normally includes Shemini Atzeret and Simchat Torah. Topic. Terminology used to describe holidays Topic. Certain terminology is used in referring to different categories of holidays, depending on their source and their nature. Shabbat, spound Ashkenazi pran, from Yiddish Shabbos, or Sabbath, is referred to by that name exclusively. Similarly, Rosh Hodesh Ars Hoods is referred to by that name exclusively. Yom Tov, Yom Tub Ashkenazi Pran, from Yid, Yantif lit. Good Day. See. Groupings. Above. Moed. Mu festive season. Plural modem, mutim refers to any of the three pilgrimage festivals of Passover, Shavuot and Sukkot. When used in comparison to Yom Tov, it refers to Chul Hamod, the intermediate days of Passover and Sukkot. Hag or Chag. Festival. Plural chagim, hajim can be used whenever Yom Tov or Moed is. It is also used to describe Hanukkah and Purim, as well as Yom Ha'atzmaut Israeli Independence Day and Yom Yerushalayim Jerusalem Day. Ta'anit, thanyat or, less commonly, tzom, zwem refers to a fast. These terms are generally used to describe the rabbinic fasts, although tzom is used liturgically to refer to Yom Kippur as well. Topic. Work. On Sabbath and Biblical Holidays. Topic. The most notable common feature of Shabbat and the Biblical festivals is the requirement to refrain from malacha on these days. Malacha is most commonly translated as work. Perhaps a better translation is creative constructive work. Strictly speaking, malacha is defined in Jewish law halacha by 39 categories of labor that were used in constructing the tabernacle while the Jews wandered in the desert. As understood traditionally and in Orthodox Judaism, on Shabbat and Yom Kippur all malacha is prohibited. On a Yom Tov other than Yom Kippur which falls on a weekday, not Shabbat, most malacha is prohibited. Some malacha related to preparation of food is permitted. On weekdays during Chul Hamod, malacha is not prohibited per se. However, malacha should be limited to that required either to enhance the enjoyment of the remainder of the festival or to avoid great financial loss. 
On other days, there are no restrictions on malacha. In principle, conservative Judaism understands the requirement to refrain from malacha in the same way as Orthodox Judaism. In practice, conservative rabbis frequently rule on prohibitions around malacha differently from Orthodox authorities. Still, there are a number of conservative, Masorda communities around the world where Sabbath and festival observance fairly closely resembles Orthodox observance. However, many, if not most, lay members of conservative congregations in North America do not consider themselves Sabbath observant, even by conservative standards. At the same time, adherents of Reform Judaism and Reconstructionist Judaism do not accept halacha, and therefore restrictions on malacha, as binding at all. Jews fitting any of these descriptions refrain from malacha in practice only as they personally see fit. Shabbat and holiday work restrictions are always put aside in cases of pikwach nefesh, which is saving a human life. At the most fundamental level, if there is any possibility whatsoever that action must be taken to save a life, Shabbat restrictions are set aside immediately, and without reservation. Where the danger to life is present but less immediate, there is some preference to minimize violation of Shabbat work restrictions where possible. The laws in this area are complex. Topic. Second day of biblical festivals Topic. The Torah specifies a single date on the Jewish calendar for observance of holidays. Nevertheless, festivals of biblical origin other than Shabbat and Yom Kippur are observed for two days outside the land of Israel, and Rosh Hashanah is observed for two days even inside the land of Israel. Dates for holidays on the Jewish calendar are expressed in the Torah as Day X of month Y. Accordingly, the beginning of month Y needs to be determined before the proper date of the holiday on Day X can be fixed. Months in the Jewish calendar are lunar, and originally were proclaimed by the blowing of a shofar. Later, the Sanhedrin received testimony of witnesses saying they saw the new crescent moon. Then the Sanhedrin would inform Jewish communities away from its meeting place that it had proclaimed a new moon. The practice of observing a second festival day stemmed from delays in disseminating that information. Rosh Hashanah. Because of holiday restrictions on travel, messengers could not even leave the seat of the Sanhedrin until the holiday was over. Inherently, there was no possible way for anyone living away from the seat of the Sanhedrin to receive news of the proclamation of the new month until messengers arrived after the fact. Accordingly, the practice emerged that Rosh Hashanah was observed on both possible days, as calculated from the previous month's start, everywhere in the world. Three pilgrimage festivals. Sukkot and Passover fall on the 15th day of their respective months. This gave messengers two weeks to inform communities about the proclamation of the new month. Normally, they would reach most communities within the land of Israel within that time, but they might fail to reach communities farther away such as those in Babylonia or overseas. Consequently, the practice developed that these holidays be observed for one day within Israel, but for two days both possible days is calculated from the previous month's start outside Israel. This practice is known as Yom Tov Sheni Shel Galiot, second day of festivals in exile communities. For Shavuot, calculated as the 50th day from Passover, the above issue did not pertain directly, as the correct date for Passover would be known by then. Nevertheless, the Talmud applies the same rule to Shavuot, and to the seventh day of Passover and Shemini Aitzaret. For consistency, Yom Kippur is not observed for two days anywhere because of the difficulty of maintaining a fast over two days. Shabbat is not observed based on a calendar date, but simply at intervals of seven days. Accordingly, there is never a doubt of the date of Shabbat, and it need never be observed for two days. Adherents of Reform Judaism and Reconstructionist Judaism generally do not observe the second day of festivals, although some do observe two days of Rosh Hashanah. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Holidays of Biblical and Rabbinic Talmudic origin. Topic. Topic. Shabbat. The Sabbath. Topic. Jewish law halacha accords Shabbat spount the status of a holiday, a day of rest celebrated on the seventh day of each week. Jewish law defines a day as ending at either sundown or nightfall, when the next day then begins. Thus, Shabbat begins just before sundown Friday night. Its start is marked by the lighting of Shabbat candles and the recitation of Kiddush over a cup of wine, and Shabbat ends at nightfall Saturday night. 
Its conclusion is marked by the prayer known as Havdalah. The fundamental rituals and observances of Shabbat include reading of the weekly Torah portion. Abbreviation of the Amidah in the three regular daily services to eliminate requests for everyday needs. Addition of a Musaf service to the daily prayer services. Enjoyment of three meals, often elaborate or ritualized, through the course of the day. Restraint from performing malacha. See above. In many ways, Halakha Jewish law sees Shabbat as the most important holy day in the Jewish calendar. It is the first holiday mentioned in the Tanakh Hebrew Bible, and God was the first one to observe it Genesis. The Torah reading on Shabbat has more sections of Parshio Torah readings than on Yom Kippur or any other Jewish holiday. The prescribed penalty in the Torah for a transgression of Shabbat prohibitions is death by stoning Exodus chapter 31, while for other holidays the penalty is relatively less severe. Observance of Shabbat is the benchmark used in Halacha to determine whether an individual is a religiously observant, religiously reliable member of the community. Topic. Rosh Hodesh — the new month Topic. Rosh Hodesh Ars Hoods lit. Head of the month is a minor holiday or observance occurring on the first day of each month of the Jewish calendar, as well as the last day of the preceding month if it has 30 days. Rosh Hodesh observance during at least a portion of the period of the prophets could be fairly elaborate. Over time there have been varying levels of observance of a custom that women are excused from certain types of work. Fasting is normally prohibited on Rosh Hodesh, beyond the preceding, current observance is limited to changes in liturgy. In the month of Tishrei, this observance is superseded by the observance of Rosh Hashanah, a major holiday. Related observances The date of the forthcoming Rosh Hodesh is announced in synagogue on the preceding Sabbath. There are special prayers set upon observing the waxing moon for the first time each month. Topic. Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year Topic. Topic. Selik Hot Topic. The month of Elul that precedes Rosh Hashanah is considered to be a propitious time for repentance. For this reason, additional penitential prayers called Selik Hot are added to the daily prayers, except on Shabbat. Sephardi Jews add these prayers each weekday during Elul. Ashkenazi Jews recite them from the last Sunday or Saturday night preceding Rosh Hashanah that allows at least four days of recitations. Topic. Rosh Hashanah Topic. Erev Rosh Hashanah Eve of the first day, 29 Elul Rosh Hashanah, 1-2 Tishrei According to oral tradition, Rosh Hashanah Ars Hesenage lit. Head of the year, is the day of memorial or remembrance, Yom Hasgron Yom Hazakaran, and the day of judgment, Yom Hedin Yom Hedin. God appears in the role of king, remembering and judging each person individually according to his, her deeds, and making a decree for each person for the following year. The holiday is characterized by one specific mitzvah, blowing the shofar. According to the Torah, this is the first day of the seventh month of the calendar year, and marks the beginning of a ten-day period leading up to Yom Kippur. According to one of two Talmudic opinions, the creation of the world was completed on Rosh Hashanah, morning prayer services are lengthy on Rosh Hashanah, and focus on the themes described above, majesty and judgment, remembrance, the birth of the world, and the blowing of the shofar. Ashkenazi Jews recite the brief Tashlik prayer, a symbolic casting off of the previous year's sins, during the afternoon of Rosh Hashanah. The Bible specifies Rosh Hashanah as a one-day holiday, but it is traditionally celebrated for two days, even within the land of Israel. See Second Day of Biblical Festivals, above. Topic. Four New Years Topic. The Torah itself does not use any term like New Year in reference to Rosh Hashanah. The Mishnah in Rosh Hashanah specifies four different New Year's days. For different purposes, one Tishrei conventional Rosh Hashanah, New Year, for calculating calendar years, sabbatical year, Shemitah, and jubilee cycles, and the age of trees for purposes of Jewish law, and for separating grain tithes. Fifteen Shivat to Bishvat, New Year, for trees, i.e., their current agricultural cycle and related tithes. 
one Nissan New Year for counting months and major festivals and for calculating the years of the reign of a Jewish king. In biblical times, the day following 29 Adar, year 1 of the reign of underscore underscore underscore, would be followed by 1 Nisan, year 2 of the reign of underscore underscore underscore. In modern times, although the Jewish calendar year number changes on Rosh Hashanah, the months are still numbered from Nisan. The three pilgrimage festivals are always reckoned as coming in the order Passover Shavuot Sukkot. This can have religious law consequences even in modern times. One Elul, Rosh Hashanah Labahima, New Year, for animal tithes. Topic: Asurat Yemei Teshuva, Ten Days of Repentance. Topic: The first ten days of Tishrei, from the beginning of Rosh Hashanah until the end of Yom Kippur, are known as the Ten Days of Repentance, Sirt Mi Sub Asurat Yemei Teshuva. During this time, in anticipation of Yom Kippur, it is exceedingly appropriate for Jews to practice teshuva literally return an examination of one's deeds and repentance for sins one has committed against other people and God. This repentance can take the form of additional supplications, confessing one S deeds before God, fasting, self-reflection, and an increase of involvement with, or donations to, charity. Tzom Gedalia — Fast of Gedalia Tzom Gedalia — Three Tishraith Fast of Gedalia Zwem Gedli is a minor Jewish fast day. It commemorates the assassination of the governor of Judah, Gedalia, which ended any level of Jewish rule following the destruction of the First Temple. The assassination apparently occurred on Rosh Hashanah 1 Tishrei, but the fast is postponed to 3 Tishrei in respect for the holiday. It is further postponed to 4 Tishrei if 3 Tishrei is Shabbat, as on all minor fast days, fasting from dawn to dusk is required, but other laws of mourning are not normally observed. A Torah reading is included in both the Shacharit and Minha prayers, and a Haftarah is also included at Minha. There are also a number of additions to the liturgy of both services. Topic. Yom Kippur — Day of Atonement Topic. Erev Yom Kippur — 9 Tishrei Yom Kippur — 10 Tishrei begins at sunset Yom Kippur — Yom Kaifauer is the holiest day of the year for Jews. Its central theme is atonement and reconciliation. This is accomplished through prayer and complete fasting — including abstinence from all food and drink — including water — by all healthy adults. Bathing, wearing of perfume or cologne, wearing of leather shoes, and sexual relations are some of the other prohibitions on Yom Kippur. All them designed to ensure one's attention is completely and absolutely focused on the quest for atonement with God. Yom Kippur is also unique among holidays as having work-related restrictions identical to those of Shabbat. The fast and other prohibitions commence on 10 Tishrei at sunset. Sunset being the beginning of the day in Jewish tradition. A traditional prayer in Aramaic called Kol Nidri, all vows, is traditionally recited just before sunset. Although often regarded as the start of the Yom Kippur evening service, to such a degree that Arab Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur evening, is often called Kol Nidri, also spelled Kol Nidre. It is technically a separate tradition. This is especially so because, being recited before sunset, it is actually recited on 9 Tishrei, which is the day before Yom Kippur, it is not recited on Yom Kippur itself, on 10 Tishrei, which begins after the sun sets. The words of Kol Nidri differ slightly between Ashkenazic and Sephardic traditions. In both, the supplicant prays to be released from all personal vows made to God during the year, so that any unfulfilled promises made to God will be annulled and, thus, forgiven. In Ashkenazi tradition, the reference is to the coming year, in Sephardic tradition, the reference is to the year just ended. Only vows between the supplicant and God are relevant. Vows made between the supplicant and other people remain perfectly valid, since they are unaffected by the prayer. A tallit four-cornered prayer shawl is donned for evening and afternoon prayers the only day of the year in which this is done. In traditional Ashkenazi communities, men wear the kittle throughout the day's prayers. The prayers on Yom Kippur evening are lengthier than on any other night of the year. Once services reconvene in the morning, the services in all traditions are the longest of the year. 
In some traditional synagogues prayers run continuously from morning until nightfall, or nearly so. Two highlights of the morning prayers in traditional synagogues are the recitation of Yizkor, the prayer of remembrance, and of liturgical poems describing the temple service of Yom Kippur. Two other highlights happen late in the day. During the Mincha prayer, the Haftarah reading features the entire Book of Jonah. Finally, the day concludes with Nay, ilah, a special service recited only on the day of Yom Kippur. Nay, ilah deals with the closing of the holiday, and contains a fervent final plea to God for forgiveness just before the conclusion of the fast. Yom Kippur comes to an end with the blowing of the shofar, which marks the conclusion of the fast. It is always observed as a one-day holiday, both inside and outside the boundaries of the land of Israel. Yom Kippur is considered, along with 15th of Avenue, as the happiest days of the year Talmud Bavli — Tractate Ta'anit. Sukkot — Feast of Booths or Tabernacles Erev Sukkot, 14 Tishrei Sukkot, 15 to 21 Tishrei, 22 outside Israel. The first day of Sukkot is outside Israel. First two days are full Yom Tov, while the remainder of Sukkot has the status of Chul Hamod, intermediate days. Sukkot Swau or Sukkot, Sukkot or Sukkoth is a seven-day festival, also known as the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles, or just Tabernacles. It is one of the three pilgrimage festivals, Shalish Regalim, mentioned in the Bible. Sukkot commemorates the years that the Jews spent in the desert on their way to the Promised Land, and celebrates the way in which God protected them under difficult desert conditions. The word Sukkot is the plural of the Hebrew word sukkah, meaning booth. Jews are commanded to dwell in booths during the holiday. This generally means taking meals, but some sleep in the sukkah as well, particularly in Israel. There are specific rules for constructing a sukkah. Along with dwelling in a sukkah, the principal ritual unique to this holiday is use of the four species lulav palm, hadas myrtle, arava willow, and etrog citron. On each day of the holiday other than Shabbat, these are waved in association with the recitation of Hillel in the synagogue, then walked in a procession around the synagogue called the Hoshanit. The seventh day of the Sukkot is called Hashanah Rabbah, the Great Hashanah, singular of Hoshanit and the source of the English word Hosanna. The climax of the day's prayers includes seven processions of Hoshanit around the synagogue. This tradition mimics practices from the temple in Jerusalem. Many aspects of the day's customs also resemble those of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Hashanah Rabbah is traditionally taken to be the day of the delivery of the final judgment of Yom Kippur, and offers a last opportunity for pleas of repentance before the holiday season closes. Topic. Shemini Eitzaret and Simchat Torah Topic. Shemini Eitzaret, 22 Tishrei combined with Simchat Torah in Israel Simchat Torah outside Israel, 23 Tishrei The holiday of Shemini Eitzaret Smini Zert immediately follows the conclusion of the holiday of Sukkot. The Hebrew word Shemini means eighth, and refers to its position on the eighth day of Sukkot, actually a seven-day holiday. This name reflects the fact that while in many respects Shemini Eitzaret is a separate holiday in its own right, in certain respects its celebration is linked to that of Sukkot. Outside Israel, meals are still taken in the Sukkah on this day. The main notable custom of this holiday is the celebration of Simchat Torah, Smort Tor meaning, rejoicing with the Torah. This name originally referred to a special ceremony. The last weekly Torah portion is read from Deuteronomy, completing the annual cycle, and is followed immediately by the reading of the first chapter of Genesis, beginning the new annual cycle. Services are especially joyous, and all attendees, young and old, are involved. This ceremony so dominates the holiday that in Israel, where the holiday is one day long, the whole holiday is often referred to as Simchat Torah. Outside Israel, the holiday is two days long, the name Shemini Eitzaret is used for the first day, while the second is normally called Simchat Torah. Hanukkah — Festival of Lights Erev Hanukkah, 24 Kislev 
Hanukkah, 25 Kislev 2 or 3 Tevet The story of Hanukkah Nuke is preserved in the books of the 1st and 2nd Maccabees. These books are not part of the Tanakh Hebrew Bible, they are apocryphal books instead. The miracle of the one-day supply of olive oil miraculously lasting eight days is first described in the Talmud Shabbat 21b, written about 600 years after the events described in the books of Maccabees. Hanukkah marks the defeat of Seleucid Empire forces that had tried to prevent the people of Israel from practicing Judaism. Judah Maccabee and his brothers destroyed overwhelming forces, and rededicated the temple in Jerusalem. The eight-day festival is marked by the kindling of lights, one on the first night, two on the second, and so on, using a special candle holder called a Hanukkah, or a Hanukkah menorah. Religiously, Hanukkah is a minor holiday. Except on Shabbat, restrictions on work do not apply. Aside from the kindling of lights, formal religious observance is restricted to changes in liturgy. Hanukkah celebration tends to be informal and based on custom rather than law. Three widely practiced customs include Consumption of foods prepared in oil, such as potato pancakes or jelly donuts, commemorating the miracle of oil. Playing the game of dreidel called a sevivon in Hebrew, symbolizing Jews. Disguising of illegal Torah study sessions as gambling meetings during the period leading to the Maccabees. Revolt. Giving children money, especially coins, called Hanukkah gelt. However, the custom of giving presents is of far more recent, North American, origin, and is connected to the gift economy prevalent around North American Christmas celebrations. Tenth of Tibet Topic. Asara B. Tibet, Ten Tevet The Tenth of Tibet, Sir Bidibit Asara B. Tevet is a minor fast day, marking the beginning of the siege of Jerusalem as outlined in 2 Kings 25 verse 1. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and encamped against it, and they built forts against it roundabout. This fast's commemoration also includes other events occurring on 8, 9 and 10 Tevet. This fast is observed like other minor fasts CTZOM Gedalia, above. This is the only minor fast that can fall on a Friday under the current fixed Jewish calendar. Tu Bishvat. New Year of the Trees. Tu Bishvat, 15 Shiva Tu Bishvat, WBS lit. 15th of Shivat, as two is the number. 15 in Hebrew letters, is the new year for trees. It is also known as Hai Hain Hag Ha Ilanot, Festival of Trees, or Ars Hesenh Line Rosh Ha Shana La Ilanot, New Year for Trees. According to the Mishnah, it marks the day from which fruit tithes are counted each year. Starting on this date, the biblical prohibition on eating the first three years of fruit orla and the requirement to bring the fourth year fruit neta revai to the temple in Jerusalem were counted. During the 17th century, Rabbi Yitzchak Luria of Safed and his disciples created a short Seder, called Hemdat Hayamim, reminiscent of the Seder that Jews observe on Passover, that explores the holiday's Kabbalistic themes. This Tu Bishvat Seder has witnessed a revival in recent years. More generally, Tu Bishvat is celebrated in modern times by eating various fruits and nuts associated with the land of Israel. Traditionally, trees are planted on this day. Many children collect funds leading up to this day to plant trees in Israel. Trees are usually planted locally as well. <laughs> Purim — Festival of Lots Fast of Esther, normally 13 Adar Purim, 14 Adar Shushan Purim, 15 Adar In leap years on the Hebrew calendar, the above dates are observed in the second Adar, Adar Sheni. The 14th and 15th of first Adar, Adar Rishon, are known as Purim Katan Purim Katan Purim Katan prim Kutin lit. Small Purim, is observed on the 14th and 15th of first Adar in leap years. These days are marked by a small increase in festivity, including a prohibition on fasting, and slight changes in the liturgy. Ta'anit Esther Fast of Esther 
Ta'anit Esther, Thanyat Stir or Fast of Esther, is named in honor of the Fast of Esther and her court as Esther prepared to approach the king unbidden to invite him and Haman to a banquet. It commemorates that fast, as well as one alluded to later in the Book of Esther, undertaken as the Jews prepared to battle their enemies. This fast is observed like other minor fasts Ctzom Gedalia, above. While normally observed on 13 Adar, the eve of Purim, this fast is advanced to Thursday, 11 Adar, when 13 Adar falls on Shabbat. Purim and Shushan Purim Purim Prim commemorates the events that took place in the Book of Esther. The principal celebrations or commemorations include The reading of the Megillah. Traditionally, this is read from a scroll twice during Purim once in the evening and again in the morning. Ashkenazim have a custom of making disparaging noises at every mention of Haman's name during the reading. The giving of Mishlok Manat, gifts of food and drink to friends and neighbors. The giving of Matanat Le'evionim, gifts to the poor and the needy. The Purim meal say, Udit Purim or Purim say, Uda. This meal is traditionally accompanied by consumption of alcohol, often heavy, although Jewish sages have warned about the need to adhere to all religious laws even in a drunken state, several customs have evolved from these principal commemorations. One widespread custom to act out the story of Purim. The Purim spiel, or Purim play, has its origins in this, although the Purim spiel is not limited to that subject. Wearing of costumes and masks is also very common. These may be an outgrowth of Purim plays, but there are several theories as to the origin of the custom, most related in some way to the hidden nature of the miracles of Purim. Purim carnivals of various types have also become customary. In Israel there are festive parades, known as Ad D. Lo Yada, in the town. South Main Street. The largest and most renowned is in Holon. Most Jews celebrate Purim on 14 Adar, the day of celebration after the Jews defeated their enemies. Because Jews in the capital city of Shushan fought with their enemies an extra day, Purim is celebrated a day later there, on the day known as Swesen Prim, Shushan Purim. This observance was expanded to walled cities, which are defined as cities walled since the time of Joshua. In practice, there are no Jews living in Shushan Shush, Iran, and Shushan Purim is observed fully only in Jerusalem. Cities like Safed and Tiberias also partially observe Shushan Purim. Elsewhere, Shushan Purim is marked only by a small increase in festivity, including a prohibition on fasting, and slight changes in the liturgy. Topic. Pesach — Passover Topic. Erev Pesach and Fast of the Firstborn, Ta'anit Bekorit, 14 Nisan Pesach Passover, 15-21 Nisan outside Israel 15-22 Nisan The first day and last day of Passover outside Israel, first two and last two days are full Yom Tov, while the remainder of Passover has the status of Chul Hamod, intermediate days. Pesach Sheni, second Passover, 14 Iyar, Topic. Month of Nisan Topic. As a rule, the month of Nisan is considered to be one of extra joy. Traditionally, throughout the entire month, Tahanun is omitted from the prayer service, many public mourning practices such as delivering a eulogy at a funeral are eliminated, and voluntary fasting is prohibited. However, practices sometimes vary. Topic. Eve of Passover and Fast of the Firstborn Topic. The day before Passover Erev Pesach, lit. Passover Eve, is significant for three reasons. It is the day that all of the involved preparations for Passover, especially elimination of leavened food, or hametz, must be completed. In particular, a formal search for remaining hametz is done during the evening of Erev Pesach, and all remaining hametz is finally destroyed, disposed of or nullified during the morning of Erev Pesach. It is the day observed as the fast of the firstborn, Thanyat Ruth. Jews who are firstborn fast, in remembrance of the tenth plague, when God killed the Egyptian firstborn, while sparing the Jewish firstborn. This fast is overridden by a sudat mitzvah, a meal celebrating the fulfillment of a commandment. Accordingly, it is almost universal for firstborn Jews to attend such a meal on this day so as to obviate their need to fast. 
During the era of the Temple in Jerusalem, the Korban Pesach, or sacrifice of the Paschal Lamb, was carried out the afternoon of 14 Nisan in anticipation of its consumption on Passover night, when Passover starts on Sunday, and the Eve of Passover is therefore Shabbat. The above schedule is altered. See Eve of Passover on Shabbat for details. Topic. Passover Topic. Passover Passage Pesach, also known liturgically as Hai Hamzau, Hag Hamatso, the Festival of Unleavened Bread, is one of the three pilgrimage festivals Shalish Regalim mentioned in the Bible. Passover commemorates the liberation of the Israelite slaves from Egypt. No hametz leavened food is eaten, or even owned, during the week of Passover, in commemoration of the fact that the Israelites left Egypt so quickly that their bread did not have enough time to rise. Observant Jews go to great lengths to remove all hametz from their homes and offices in the run-up to Passover, along with the avoidance of hametz, the principal ritual unique to this holiday is the Seder. The Seder, meaning, order is an ordered ritual meal eaten on the first night of Passover, and outside Israel also on the second night. This meal is known for its distinctive ritual foods, matzah unleavened bread, maror bitter herbs, and four cups of wine, as well as its prayer text, handbook, study guide, the Haggadah. Participation in a Passover Seder is one of the most widely observed of Jewish rituals, even among less affiliated or less observant Jews. Passover lasts seven days in Israel, as per X, 12, 15, and eight days outside Israel. The holiday of the last day of Passover outside Israel, last two days, commemorates the splitting of the Red Sea. According to tradition, this occurred on the seventh day of Passover. Topic: Pesach Sheni. Topic: Pesach Sheni, Passage, Second Passover is a day prescribed in the Torah to allow those who did not bring the Paschal Lamb offering Korban Pesach a second chance to do so. Eligibility was limited to those who were distant from Jerusalem on Passover, or those who were ritually impure and ineligible to participate in a sacrificial offering. Today, some have the custom to eat matzah on Pesach Sheni, and some make a small change to the liturgy. Sephira — Counting of the Omer Seferat HaOmer, counting of the Omer, 16 Nisan 5 Sivan Sephira, lit. Counting. More fully, Seferat HaOmer, counting of the Omer. Spired Humar is the 49-day period between the biblical pilgrimage festivals of Passover and Shavuot. The Torah states that this period is to be counted, both in days and in weeks. The first day of this period is the day of the first grain offering of the New Year's crop, an Omer of barley. The day following the 49th day of the period is the festival of Shavuot. The Torah specifies a grain offering of wheat on that day. Symbolically, this period has come to represent the spiritual development of the Israelites from slaves in the polytheistic society of ancient Egypt to free, monotheistic people worthy of the revelation of the Torah, traditionally said to have occurred on Shavuot. Spiritual development remains a key rabbinic teaching of this period. Sephira has long been observed as a period of semi mourning. The customary explanation cites a plague that killed 24,000 students of Rabbi Akiva BT Yevamot 62b. In broad terms, the morning practices observed include limiting actual celebrations such as weddings, not listening to music, not wearing new clothing, and not shaving or taking a haircut. There is a wide variety of practice as to the specifics of this observance. See Counting of the Omer semi-morning. Lag Baomer Topic Lag Ba Omer, 18 Er Lag Ba Omer G Bumar is the 33rd day in the Omer count G is the number 33 in Hebrew. By Ashkenazi practice, the semi morning observed during the period of Sephira is lifted on Lag Ba Omer, while Sephardi practice is to lift it at the end of Lag Ba Omer. Minor liturgical changes are made on Lag Baomer, because morning practices are suspended, weddings are often conducted on this day. Lag Ba. Omer is identified as the Yom Hilula of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, one of the leading Tanaim teachers quoted in the Mishnah and ascribed author of the core text of Kabbalah, the Zohar. Customary celebrations include bonfires, picnics, and bow and arrow play by children. 
Boys sometimes receive their first haircuts on Lag Ba, Omer, while Hasidic Rebbes hold tishas in honor of the day. In Israel, Lag Ba, Omer is associated with the Bar Kokhba revolt against the Roman Empire. In Zionist thought, the plague that decimated Rabbi Akiva. S. 24,000 disciples is explained as a veiled reference to the revolt. The 33rd day representing the end of the plague is explained as the day of Bar Kokhba's victory. The traditional bonfires and bow and arrow play were thus reinterpreted as celebrations of military victory. In this vein, the order originally creating the Israel Defense Forces was issued on Lag Ba. Omer 1948, 13 days after Israel declared independence. Topic. Shavuot — Feast of Weeks — Yom Habikaram Erev Shavuot — 5 Sivan Shavuot — 6 and outside Israel, 7 Sivan Shavuot, Spoundubliut The Feast of Weeks, is one of the three pilgrimage festivals Shalish Regalim ordained in the Torah. Different from other biblical holidays, the date for Shavuot is not explicitly fixed in the Torah. Instead, it is observed on the day following the 49th and final day in the counting of the Omer. In the current era of the fixed Jewish calendar, this puts the date of Shavuot as 6 Sivan. In Israel and in Reform Judaism, it is a one day holiday, elsewhere, it is a two day holiday extending through 7 Sivan. According to rabbinic tradition, codified in the Talmud at Shabbat 87b, the Ten Commandments were given on this day. In the era of the Temple, there were certain specific offerings mandated for Shavuot, and Shavuot was the first day for bringing of Bikurim to the Temple. Other than those, there are no explicit mitzvah unique to Shavuot given in the Torah parallel to Matzah on Passover or Sukkah on Sukkot. Nevertheless, there are a number of widespread customs observed on Shavuot. During this holiday the Torah portion containing the Ten Commandments is read in the synagogue, and the Biblical Book of Ruth is read as well. It is traditional to eat dairy meals during Shavuot. In observant circles, all-night Torah study is common on the first night of Shavuot, while in Reform Judaism, Shavuot is the customary date for confirmation ceremonies. Topic. Morning for Jerusalem, 17th of Tammuz and Tisha B'Av the three-week period starting on 17 Tammuz and concluding after Tisha B'Av has traditionally been observed as a period of mourning for the destruction of Jerusalem and the Holy Temple there. Topic. Fast of the 17th of Tammuz Topic. Shiva Asarb. Tammuz, 17 Tammuz the 17th of Tammuz, Senior BDM's Shiva Asarb. Thomas traditionally marks the first breach in the walls of the Jerusalem during the Roman conquest in 70 CE, at the end of the Second Temple period. According to tradition, this day has had negative connotations since Moses broke the first set of tablets on this day. The Mishnah cites five negative events that happened on 17 Tammuz. This fast is observed like other minor fasts Ctzom Gedalia, above. When this fast falls out on Shabbat, its observance is postponed until Sunday. Topic. The three weeks and the nine days Topic. The three weeks, 17 Tamas 9 Avenue The nine days, 1 to 9 Avenue The week of Tisha B. Avenue beginning at the conclusion of Shabbat preceding Tisha B. Avenue the period between the fasts of 17 Tamas and 9 Avenue, known as the three weeks Hebrew between the straits features a steadily increasing level of mourning practices as Tisha B. Avenue approaches. Ashkenazi Jews refrain from conducting weddings and other joyful events throughout the period unless the date is established by Jewish law as for a bris or pidyon haben. They do not cut their hair during this period. Starting on the first of Avenue and throughout the nine days between the first and ninth days of Avenue, Ashkenazim traditionally refrain from eating meat and drinking wine, except on Shabbat or at a sudat mitzvah, a mitzvah meal, such as for a bris or siyum. They also refrain from bathing for pleasure. Sephardic practice varies some from this, the less severe restrictions usually begin on one Avenue, while the more severe restrictions apply during the week of Tisha B. 
Avenue itself, subject to the variations described above, Orthodox Judaism continues to maintain the traditional prohibitions. In Conservative Judaism, the Rabbinical Assembly S Committee on Jewish Law and Standards has issued several responsa legal rulings which hold that the prohibitions against weddings in this time frame are deeply held traditions but should not be construed as binding law Thus conservative Jewish practice would allow weddings during this time except on the 17th of Tammuz and 9th of Avenue themselves Rabbis within Reform Judaism and Reconstructionist Judaism hold that Halakha Jewish law is no longer binding and follow their individual consciences on such matters. Nevertheless, the Rabbinical Manual of the Reform Movement encourages Reform rabbis not to conduct weddings on Tisha B. Avenue itself, out of historical consciousness and respect for the Jewish community. Tisha B'Av, 9th of Avenue. Topic. Tisha B. Avenue, 9 Av Tisha B. Avenue Tish Bibi is a major fast day and day of mourning. A midrashic tradition states that the spies' negative report concerning the land of Israel was delivered on Tisha B. Avenue. Consequently, the day became auspicious for negative events in Jewish history. Most notably, both the first temple, originally built by King Solomon, and the second temple of Roman times were destroyed on Tisha B. Avenue. Other calamities throughout Jewish history are said to have taken place on Tisha B. Avenue, including King Edward I's edict compelling the Jews to leave England 1290 and the Jewish expulsion from Spain in 1492. Tisha B. Avenue is a major fast. It is a 25-hour fast, running from sundown to nightfall. As on Yom Kippur, not only are eating and drinking prohibited, but also bathing, anointing, marital relations and the wearing of leather shoes. Work is not prohibited, as on biblical holidays, but is discouraged. In the evening, the Book of Lamentations is read in the synagogue, while in the morning lengthy kano, poems of elegy, are recited. From evening until noon morning rituals resembling those of Shiva are observed, including sitting on low stools or the floor, after noon those restrictions are somewhat lightened, in keeping with the tradition that Messiah will be born on Tisha B. Avenue While the fast ends at nightfall of 9–10 Avenue, the restrictions of the three weeks and nine days continue through noon on 10 Avenue because the second temple continued to burn through most of that day. When 9 Avenue falls on Shabbat, when fasting is prohibited, the fast is postponed until 10 Avenue. In that case, the restrictions of the three weeks and nine days end with the fast, except for the prohibition against eating meat and drinking wine, which extend until the morning of 10 Avenue. Topic 2 Bav. 2B. Avenue, 15 Av 2B. Avenue, 2 Bibi lit. 15th of Avenue, is a day mentioned in the Talmud alongside Yom Kippur as happiest of the year. It was a day celebrating the bringing of wood used for the temple service, as well as a day when marriages were arranged. Today, it is marked by a small change in liturgy. In modern Israel, the day has become somewhat of an analogue to Valentine's Day. Other fasts Topic. Several other fast days of ancient or medieval origin continue to be observed to some degree in modern times. Such continued observance is usually by Orthodox Jews only, and is not universal today even among Orthodox Jews. Fasts for droughts and other public troubles. Much of the Talmudic tractate Ta. And it is devoted to the proclamation and execution of public fasts. The most detailed description refers to fasts in times of drought in the land of Israel. Apparently these fasts included a nay, ilah, closing prayer, a prayer now reserved for recitation on Yom Kippur only. While the specific fasts described in the Mishnah fell into disuse once Jews were exiled from the land of Israel, various Jewish communities have declared fasts over the years, using these as a model. Two examples include a fast among Polish Jews commemorating the massacre of Jews during the Komelnitsky uprising and one among Russian Jews during anti-Jewish pogroms of the 1880s. 
Since the establishment of the State of Israel, the Chief Rabbinate of Israel has urged fasting in times of drought, Behab. The fasts of Bet Hay Bet Monday Thursday to Monday were established as a vehicle for atonement from possible excesses during the extended holiday periods of Passover and Sukkot. They are proclaimed on the first Shabbat of the month of Iyar following Passover, and Marcheshvan following Sukkot. Based on the model of Mishnah Ta'anit, they are then observed on the Monday, Thursday and Monday following that Shabbat. Yom Kippur Katan, Little Yom Kippur. These fasts originated in the 16th century Kabbalistic community of Safed. They are conceptually linked to the sin offerings that were brought to the temple in Jerusalem on each Rosh Hodesh. These fasts are observed on the day before Rosh Hodesh in most months. Israeli, Jewish national holidays and days of remembrance As a general rule, the biblical Jewish holidays Sabbath, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Passover, Shavuot, Sukkot and Purim are observed as public holidays in Israel. Hanukkah is a school holiday, but businesses remain open. On Tisha B'Av, restaurants and places of entertainment are closed. Other Jewish holidays listed above are observed in varying ways and to varying degrees. Between the creation of the State of Israel in 1948 and the aftermath of the Six-Day War, the Knesset, generally in consultation with the Chief Rabbinate of Israel, established four national holidays or Days of Remembrance Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day Yom Hazakaran, Memorial Day Yom Ha'atzmaut, Israel Independence Day Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Day The status of these days as religious events is not uniform within the Jewish world. Non-Orthodox, religious Zionist and modern Orthodox Jewish religious movements accept these days as religious as well as national in nature. As a rule, these four days are not accepted as religious observances by most Haredi Jews, including Hasidim. Some Haredim are opposed to the existence of the State of Israel altogether on religious grounds, others simply feel that there are not sufficient grounds under Jewish law to justify the establishment of new religious holidays. For details, see Haredim and Zionism. Observance of these days in Jewish communities outside Israel is typically more muted than their observance in Israel. Events held in government and public venues within Israel are often held in Jewish communal settings synagogues and community centers abroad. More recently, the Knesset established two additional holidays Yom Ha'aliyah, Aliyah Day A day to commemorate the expulsion of Jews from Arab lands and Iran Finally, the Israeli government also recognizes several ethnic Jewish observances with holiday status. Yom Hashoah — Holocaust Remembrance Day Topic. Yom Hashoah, nominally 27 Nisan Yom Hashoah lit. Holocaust Day, is a day of remembrance for victims of the Holocaust. Its full name is Yom Hazakaran L'Shoah V'Lijevra lit. Holocaust and Heroism Remembrance Day. Yom has grown else vlur and reflects a desire to recognize martyrs who died in active resistance to the Nazis alongside those who died as passive victims. Its date, 27 Nisan, was chosen because it commemorates the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, the best known of the armed Jewish uprisings. Places of public entertainment are closed throughout Israel in recognition of the day. Public commemoration of Yom HaShoah usually includes religious elements such as the recitation of psalms, memorial prayers, and Kaddish, and the lighting of memorial candles. In Israel, the most notable observances are the state memorial ceremony at Yad Vashem and the sirens marking off a two-minute silence at 10 a.m. Religious Zionist and modern Orthodox Jews generally participate in such public observances along with secular Jews and Jews who adhere to more liberal religious movements. Outside Israel, Jewish communities observe Yom HaShoah in addition to or instead of their country's Holocaust Memorial Days. Probably the most notable commemoration is the March of the Living, held at the site of Auschwitz-Birkenau, attended by Jews from all parts of the world. Outside Orthodoxy, a liturgy for Yom HaShoah is beginning to develop. The conservative, reform and reconstructionist prayer books all include liturgical elements for Yom HaShoah, to be added to the regular weekday prayers. Conservative Judaism has written a scroll, called Megillat Hashoah, intended to become a definitive liturgical reading for Yom Hashoah. 
The Orthodox world even the segment that participates publicly in Yom HaShoah has been reluctant to write a liturgy for the day, preferring to compose kinet, prayers of lamentation for recitation on Tisha B'Av, in order to ensure that public Yom HaShoah ceremonies in Israel do not violate Shabbat prohibitions. The date for Yom HaShoah varies as follows. If 27 Nisan occurs on a Friday, the observance of Yom HaShoah is advanced to the previous day Thursday, 26 Nisan. If 27 Nisan occurs on a Sunday, the observance of Yom HaShoah is delayed to the following day Monday, 28 Nisan. <laughs> Yom Hazakaran — Memorial Day Yom Hazakaran, nominally 4 Iyarim Hazakaran lit. Memorial Day, is a day of remembrance of the fallen of Israel's wars. During the first years of Israel's independence, this remembrance was observed on Yom Ha Atzmaut Independence Day itself. However, by 1951, the memorial observance was separated from the festive celebration of Independence Day and moved to its current date, the day before Yom Ha. Otsmout. Since 2000, the scope of the memorial has expanded to include civilians slain by acts of hostile terrorism. Its full name is now Yom Hiskron Lili Merk Yisrael Wilnji Pwl Hive, Day of Remembrance for the Fallen of the Battles of Israel and the Victims of Terror. Places of public entertainment are closed throughout Israel in recognition of the day. Many schools, businesses and other institutions conduct memorial services on this day, and it is customary to visit the graves of fallen soldiers and to recite memorial prayers there. The principal public observances are the evening opening ceremony at the Western Wall and the morning services of remembrance at military cemeteries throughout the country, each opened by the sounding of sirens. The public observances conclude with the service at the military cemetery on Mount Herzl that serves as the transition to Yom Ha'atzmaut. Outside Israel, Yom Hazakaran observances are often folded into Yom Ha Atzmaut celebrations. Within Israel, Yom Hazakaran is always the day before Yom Ha Atzmaut, but that date moves to prevent violation of Sabbath prohibitions during the ceremonies of either day. See following section for details. Topic: <laughs> Yom Ha Atzmaut, Israel Independence Day. Topic. Yom Ha Atzmaut, nominally 5 Iyarim Ha Atzmaut, Yom Hazmau is Israel's Independence Day. Observance of this day by Jews inside and outside Israel is widespread, and varies in tone from secular military parades and barbecues to religious recitation of Hillel and new liturgies. Although Israel S. Independence was declared on a Friday, the chief rabbinate has long been mindful of the possibility of Yom Ha. Atzmaut and Yom Hazakaran observances leading to violation of Sabbath prohibitions. To prevent such violations, the dates of Yom Hazakaran and Yom Ha'atzmaut vary as follows. If 4-5 Iyar occur on a Sunday to Monday, the observances are delayed to Monday to Tuesday, 5-6 Iyar. If 4-5 Iyar occur on a Tuesday to Wednesday, the observances are not moved. If 4-5 Iyar occur on a Thursday to Friday, the observances are advanced to Wednesday to Thursday, 3-4 Iyar. If 4-5 Iyar occur on a Friday Shabbat, the observances are advanced to Wednesday to Thursday, 2-3 Iyar. Nearly all non-Haredi Jewish religious communities have incorporated changes or enhancements to the liturgy in honor of Yom Ha. Atzmaut and suspend the morning practices of the period of Sefirat Ha. Omer, see Yom Ha. Atzmaut. Religious customs for details. Within the religious Zionist and modern Orthodox communities, these changes are not without controversy, and customs continue to evolve. Haredi religious observance of Yom Ha. Atzmaut varies widely. A few Herdim, especially Sephardic Herdim, celebrate the day in a reasonably similar way to the way non-Herdim do. Most Herdim simply treat the day indifferently, i.e., as a regular day. And finally others notably Satmar Hasidim and Netore Karta mourn on the day because of their opposition to the enterprise of the State of Israel. Yom Yerushalayim — Jerusalem Day Yom 
Yom Yerushalayim, 28 Eyar Jerusalem Day Yom Erwalim marks the 1967 reunification of Jerusalem under Israeli control during the Six-Day War. This marked the first time in 19 years that the Temple Mount was accessible to Jews, and the first time since the destruction of the Second Temple 1,900 years earlier that the Temple Mount was under Jewish political control. As with Yom Ha. Atzmaut, celebrations of Yom Yerushalayim range from completely secular including hikes to Jerusalem and a large parade through downtown Jerusalem to religious recitation of Hillel and new liturgies. Although Haredim do not participate in the liturgical changes, they are somewhat more likely to celebrate Yom Yerushalayim than the other modern Israeli holidays because of the importance of the liberation of the Western Wall and the Old City of Jerusalem. Outside Israel, observance of Yom Yerushalayim is widespread, especially in Orthodox circles. It has not gained as widespread acceptance as Yom Ha. Atzmaut, especially among more politically liberal Jews, because of the continuing conflicts over the future of the city, Yom Yerushalayim has not traditionally moved to avoid Shabbat desecration, although in 2012 the chief rabbinate began some efforts in that direction. Yom Haliyah Aliyah Day Yom Haliyah, 10 Nisan Aliyah Day Yom Halai is an Israeli national holiday celebrated annually on 10 Nisan. The day was established to acknowledge Aliyah, immigration to the Jewish state, as a core value of the State of Israel, and honor the ongoing contributions of Olam immigrants to Israeli society. Immigration to Israel is a recognized religious value of Judaism, sometimes referred to as the Gathering of Israel. The date chosen for Yom Haliyah, 10 Nisan, has religious significance. It is the day on which Joshua and the Israelites crossed the Jordan River at Gilgal into the Promised Land. It was thus the first documented Mass Aliyah. The alternative date observed in the school system, 7 Heshvan, falls during the week of the Torah portion in which God instructs Abraham to leave his home and his family and go up to the land of Israel. At the present time, observance of this day appears to be secular in nature. Topic. Day to commemorate the expulsion of Jews from Arab lands and Iran Topic. Day to mark the departure and expulsion of Jews from the Arab countries and Iran, 30 November on the Gregorian calendar the Knesset established this observance in 2014. The purpose of this observance is to recognize the collective trauma of Mizrahi Jews during the period around the establishment of the State of Israel. Many Mizrachi Jews felt that their own suffering was being ignored, both in comparison to the suffering of European Jewry during the Holocaust and in comparison to the Palestinian Nakba. The Gregorian calendar date chosen as the day after the United Nations Partition Plan for Palestine was adopted, as that date marked the beginning of concentrated pressure and hostility against the community. At the present time, observance of this day appears to be secular in nature. Ethnic holidays Topic. The Israeli government officially recognizes three traditional holidays of ethnic Jewish communities in Israel. These days are also observed by their respective communities outside Israel. Mamona began as a holiday of Moroccan Jews, while similar celebrations also exist among Turkish Jews and Persian Jews. These festivals are observed on the day after Passover, when eating of ordinary food. Hametz resumes. In Israel, observance of Mamona has spread widely in recent years. It has been estimated that up to two million Jews in Israel now participate in Mamona celebrations. On the evening concluding Passover, the celebration centers on visiting the homes of friends and neighbors, Jewish and non Jewish. A variety of traditional foods are served, and symbols representing good luck and prosperity are prominently displayed. The next day, barbecues and picnics are among the most widespread activities of the celebration. The Seharain was celebrated by Kurdish Jews as a multi day nature festival starting the day after Passover. Communities would leave their villages and camp out for several days, celebrating with eating and drinking, nature walks, singing, and dancing. Its observance was interrupted after the relocation of this community to Israel in the 1950s. In recent years, it has been revived. 
But because of the already widespread celebration of Mamona in Israel, the celebration of the Seharain was moved to Chul Hamod Sukkot. The SIGD began as an evolution of the observance of Yom Kippur by the Beta Israel Ethiopian community. Currently, that community now observes it in addition to Yom Kippur. Its date is 29 Heshvan, 49 days after Yom Kippur. It shares some features of Yom Kippur, Shavuot, and other holidays. The SIGD is modeled on a ceremony of fasting, study, and prayer described in Nehemiah chapter 8, when the Jews rededicated themselves to religious observance on return to Israel after the Babylonian exile. In Ethiopia, the community would gather on a mountaintop and pray for a return to Jerusalem. The modern SIGD is centered on a promenade overlooking the old city of Jerusalem. The day's observance ends with a celebratory break fast. See also Topic Jewish greetings List of Gregorian Jewish-related and Israeli holidays Religious festival Torah readings of Yom Tov Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic Further reading Topic Brofsky, David. Hilcott Modem, Understanding the Laws of the Festivals. Jerusalem, Koran Publishers, 2013. Greenberg, Irving. The Jewish Way, Living the Holidays. New York, Touchstone, 1988. Renberg, Dahlia H. The Complete Family Guide to Jewish Holidays. New York, Adama, 1985. Strassfeld, Michael. The Jewish Holidays, A Guide and Commentary. New York, Harper and Row, 1985. Topic external links Topic Jewish Holidays Online, List of All Jewish Holidays for the Current Year or Any Given Year Hebcal, Interactive Jewish Calendar with Candle Lighting Times and Torah Readings. Jewish Holidays A calculator that figures out the dates of Jewish holidays in any year Jewish Holidays, a primer Pateos What are the main Jewish festivals? BBC 2016-2017 Jewish Calendar